Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome to my new subscribers and a warm welcome, a big hello to my regular followers, it's lovely to see you here. Now as you've probably noticed, I'm posting on YouTube a regular slot called Snippets. I've, I actually did Snippets a long time ago and then I decided to continue with them but this time put them actually in a little book. Um, just so that I've got a, a keepsake and I can look back at each snippet and just see, you know, if I'm stuck for ideas, I can look back and remember those techniques or simply go to YouTube and they're all, they're all listed there. Now, when I've done a snippet video, I've just done this one, which is snippet 26. And this is actually on the YouTube channel now and it's actually my previous video so you'll find snippet 26 on the previous video to this one so it's just there in the list and when I use this stamp sometimes when I use a stamp I use this one and then I did a card on YouTube using these stamps and I've used this stamp which is from my new release and I wanted to follow on with a longer video using the same stamp so we'll just move that out of the way so I like to do a mix of videos. I like to do my short snippets because if you've only got a snippet of time, then they're short snippet ideas that you can then expand on or just leave them as they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a piece of Pink Frog Smooth Card. It's a smooth card that takes water techniques as well. It's not a watercolour card and it's got no texture, it's smooth. So this piece is four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin. First of all, we need a piece of kitchen roll. So I'm just going to place a piece of kitchen roll underneath because I'm going to use plenty of water. Now, I have done one before just so that that can be drying a little bit so I can move on to the next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spritz a lot of water onto my card. And then I'm going to be using my Distress Oxide Reinker Iced Spruce. I haven't got another grey, so I'm using this one. Um, I'll probably get a couple more greys actually, but I'm using the one I've got, Ice Spruce. So you can use any grey Distress Oxide Reinker that you've got. If you haven't got a reinker, you can use the distress sprays and what you can do is just use a pipette to pull out some of the colour to do the same technique. So there are always ways around it. So I'm going to use the reinker and what I'm going to do is use my blower, my Tim Holtz puffer or blower. I don't think this is the Tim Holtz one. It might be just one I've bought. I've got that many. So I'm just going to give the reinker a little bit of a shake because it's got that ball bearing in the bottom. And I'm just going to add a drop of this and then I'm just going to spritz again with water so that I know it's moving. And then I'm just going to blow and move that colour just around the card. So just keep moving the colour. You can just move that around your card. And I'm just using the kitchen roll because it just soaks up some of that water. So I'm just spritzing with a bit more water and then I can move it a little bit more. Now if I want to add a little bit more colour, I can add another drop but look how little you're using. And if it doesn't move enough, just spritz with water and then just move your colour. Just move that. And it is better if you can let it dry as much as possible naturally. So just moving that around with my blower.
and that just moves the colour around beautifully. So I'll just put the lid on my... Now, as it's drying, so say that it, it's been sitting for five minutes, allow it to sit for five minutes and then get your spritzer bottle and just drop some big blobs of water on from your spritzer bottle. Just squeeze it very lightly and you'll get some big blobs of water. If your spritzer bottle doesn't do that, just put some water in your hand and just flick some big blobs of water. And what you do is you allow that just to do its thing for a few minutes and then you spritz a little bit more water again. So we'll just move this out of the way. And then I've got one that has been drying a little bit. It's still a bit wet, but it's been drying. And during the process, I've been spritzing it with water just a couple of times. But as you can see, each background will be different. Can you see the touch of green that's come from the reinker? So it's just lovely. And I can just dab that little bit of extra just up there and there. And then I'm going to have my blower again. And just to add a little bit of brightness, I've got my Liquitex acrylic ink. Now with the Liquitex acrylic ink, it comes in a little pipette. So it's perfect. And it's very, as it's, it's, it says what it's on the, exactly what it is on the tin, it's an acrylic ink, it's ink. So it's very fluid. And this one is opaque. Now, if you haven't got this, pump some paint out of your Posca pen onto your sheet here, and then you can blow that. And what I'm going to do is just add of blobs come on Tracy and then I'm just going to add a little bit of water and just spritz just move that just a little bit more that's it just so it reacts and just add a little bit I've got a couple of pieces of thick in there but we'll remove those so just make it so that it starts moving and just adding a little bit of that white just to brighten my project up a little bit. So this is opaque. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a shake. There we go. And let's add a little bit more water and then let's add another blob of the acrylic ink. And then I can just blow that again and just gives me some brightness to my design. And you can see the green coming out of the oxide. just lift this up just so that you can see this is the background we get but you can see in real life there's actually more tinges of green it's quite surprising so it's entirely up to you how much of that white you add so spritz with water and if you want to add a little bit more brightness just give that a bit of a shake actually and then just add dollop of white and, it, and then I can just blow that again so I can add as many layers of that white as, as I wish but I can still see the grey underneath and it's funny because because of that green I then want to colour my flower in a bit of that very limey green And you can add more water if you want, if you want to, it to move a little bit more. But obviously you need to make sure you've got a card that really takes that. But look at that for a background. Absolutely gorgeous. And what we'll do is we'll let that rest a bit. We won't dry it at the moment. We'll let it just do its thing and just dry for a little bit naturally while we just 
talk about our focal image. And that's what I love also about the longer videos because I can go into a little bit more detail. So let's just move this on one side. So this is the first background we created live. And then what I do is I go in and I just add a few more blobs of the water. And if you want, you can then move it a little bit more. Just the water. It's entirely up to you how often you keep adding colour. But you can just keep moving that. There we go. Let's move that. And they're just resting there. And whilst they're both resting, you know, I will show you both backgrounds so you can see the difference with the Liquitex ink and the... But if you haven't got the Liquitex ink, pump your Posca pen until it floods out onto your page and then puff it along your page. You won't ruin your page, it'd be absolutely fine. Right. So what I'm going to do then is use this image. So let me just grab... So we're using this image and this is from my new release it's called flower trio i just love this it's got some lovely flowers on um, and it's got other elements on there you can use as well so that is stamp set 924 you can still get this in a bundle with of my whole new release on creating craft if you look under the 8th and 9th of may when Abs was demonstrating for All and Create, it started at four o'clock on the 8th of May. You can find the bundle there. Right, so we'll just stamp this a second time because we might need two parts of it. So, but as I say, the colour has changed that I'm going to colour the flower in. Mainly because, as inspiration always does, it takes you on a different tangent. And because... There's some green in that background from the reinker, which I didn't expect. Then I'm going to colour my flower in, in the green. So just stamp that. I'm using my Versafine Claire Nocturne ink, which is the black. And I use the Versafine Claire because that has got a good open time. It stays wetter longer. And I do repeat this process over and over because you never know when you've got new viewers. And the reason I use Versafine Claire with my stamps is because of the detail in the stamps. I was always an archival girl, but with archival ink, if I ink the flower and I tap it several times, and then I do the same down here, by the time I've finished tapping here, this ink has already started to dry with the archival ink. So I use the Versafine Claire because it's got a, a really good open time and it stays wetter longer. So just allowing that ink just to sit on there. And then I've got the All and Create acrylic box, which I can leave it and flex, which gives me a wonderful, beautiful image. And as a designer, you never tire of seeing your designs actually come to life in photopolymer and then actually stamped on the card. Now what I've done is I've actually stamped the flower and part of the circle, because when I cut the flower out, I'd got this half left. So I'm going to use that as well, maybe. You know how I always change, but I wanted to show you something else as well. So this background, I just spritzed it this way. And I used shaded lilac, shaded lilac, speckled egg and salvage patina. Because I like to show you different ideas at the same time so I pu puffed my ink this way on this card and you can st see there's still some moisture on there and if I want to I can still add some moisture to the card with the water and still 
add. I like to show you the different ideas just so you can see. And then I can still add my add a spritz of water. I can still add my Liquitex acrylic ink, which definitely needs a stirring. There you go. And just add blobs of the white. And then again, I can spritz this just to give a little bit more lightness to the design. And I love how the ink reacts with the oxides. So you can then keep moving your inks wherever you want. And you, honestly, you can keep doing it and keep messing as long as you wish. And then I can add a little bit more of the white. And if you're frightened about adding too much, or in my case, it's not coming out at all. There we go. Just add a drop at a time. But it's so addictive because I can't stop doing it. And it just gives you a wonderful background. So again, using your oxides, but adding that white on top makes it look different. So let's put that on one side. Now, for those of you that have got um, Distress Oxide sprays, the colours, this one is Salvage Patina and Kitsch Flamingo. This is Salvage Patina and Kitsch Flamingo. And these are Distress Oxide sprays. And all I did was take the lid off and add a few dots to the project. Now this is completely dry, so I'm just going to add some water and then add some dollops of the white. So this, this was Distress Oxide Sprays. So don't think, just because you haven't got a product, product, you can't be involved. So anything that you've got that's fluid, you can use that. I tend to use my Distress products quite a lot because I love the effects that it gives. So just move the colour. So it's entirely up to you how many times you add to the colour. Okay, just so you can see the differences and let's place that on one side. Not that there's any sides left. Let's just move some of this. And then if we come back, this is our background with the iced spruce and with the white Liquitex over the top, the ink. Look at that green, can you see that green? Just, just lovely the way it adds those touches of green. But if I bring it side by side with the one I didn't add the Liquitex to, just so you can see the difference, let's just pick that up, just so you can see the difference without the white it just gives some brightness to the design so it's entirely up to you how far or where you take it and i always think it's you know if you can be as inclusive as possible 
Right, I'm just going to remove this kitchen roll because it is absolutely soaking wet. And I'll just leave that for the moment. And what I'm going to do is bring in my flour. And I'm going to use my Ecoline pens if I've got the right colour. Let's have a look. Let's see what colours we've got. Oh yes, we've got some sort of spring green. And shall we just have a little bit of what are, what are you? See, I have to test the colours to see. No, that is not what no. I want more of a turquoise. And now I'm knocking everything everywhere. That's better. Let me touch of that, I think. And I always talk to myself. Right, so what colours I'm going to use on my flower? Let's see if we can find our... There it is, water brush. And I'm going to use spring green, which is 665 and turquoise green 661 and they're my Ecoline brush pens. Let's just take this and I can use my acrylic block to just as a palette. But I always think it's great fun just to play around with techniques. Right. So I'm just going to, first of all, let's make sure that brush is clean. I think, I'm sure I, I cleaned it before I actually finished the other day. But I'm paranoid. I always sort of have a couple of seconds just to clean the brush. So I'm going to start with the spring green. Just add... And there's, there's lots of daisy plants in my garden. I've actually, I, I'm a great lover of dark coloured flowers, you know, when they're really deep, dark colours. And I'm also a big fan of like green flowers as well. They just, they're lovely in the garden. I also like white flowers because they always, like, like I do in art, adding touches of white, like I've done with the Liquitex, in my garden, I add white flowers because the white flowers in the garden do exactly they do as they do in your artwork. They lift a design. They give a pop of colour. And it's no different in your garden. It brings a pop of colour. So this year, I've actually spent quite a bit of time adding lots of white flowers to my borders as well, just to give a little bit of a lift. So I'm then going to go with the turquoise green and just add a little bit of that turquoise green. And you can see I'm just adding it just to the edges. You know, the petals, they're not huge. So it's not like you need to add gallons of colour. I always miss one petal every single time. I'm so predictable. Just that's the turquoise green. Let me just see if I've got a two. Do you know I'm terrible? I keep closing the zip. Right, where's the? Have we got a turquoise? Is it that one? So I've got those sort of greens and what I'm going to do is add a touch of the turquoise blue, 522, just to bring a little bit of blue. I just think the bit of blue will really add to it. So just adding that touch of blue. 
And I always find that colouring the flower, if you do it properly, it just takes a little bit longer. But it's worth it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spring green. Sorry about the squeaking, just add that to my acrylic block with just some water. And I'm going to pick up that spring green and I'm just going to blend the colours with that spring green. And just come in and blend the colours. So just take your time just to build up the colour. Just to blend that out. And if you find, you know, your card doesn't move as much, go in direct with the pen. You need to make sure you've got a good card that will blend those colours out. But you can also blend pen to pen, just to blend that colour out. And just use a touch of water just to, to blend. Now I used a little bit of, um, I, sorry, I used red in my project, in my snippets. So it proves how you can colour a flower differently and it, it looks completely different. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the turquoise just to, and just blend out a little bit of the turquoise as well. I always think the colouring is worth is worth taking your time. Obviously, if you if you're doing a snippet, then the flower looks just as good if you just add a touch of colour. If you've only got fifteen minutes, and often, as I always say in quite a few videos, it really is good if you can just allow your card some time. Just to just to dry a little bit because then you can go back in. I've still missed a petal. You can go back in and add a little bit more colour. So I can go back in, just add a little bit more of that blue. And because the card has got moisture on, it'll still react and still sort of bleed out. Just take that. There's a little bit on that flower. So just take your time just to add a little bit of colour. This flower is so easy to miss couple of the petals. It is for me anyway. There we go. And I do like to let let things rest. I'm going to colour this even though I'm not sure whether I'm going to use it. So let's just... I should have started with the dark colour first but there you go. So just add a little bit of that. And then let's add the turquoise blue. And then I'll just go back to the green and I'll blend it pen to pen. And then I'll go with my green, the lightest colour. And I'll go into that and just blend those colours out. blend them out and then I tend to go back in again with the second colour 
and just drag that out a little bit as well. Okay. And then I go back in with the neat. Whilst that's wet because it continues to bleed. But I do find that when you just add your layers it definitely gives a lot more a lot more vibrancy to your design so again we can give those time to rest let's move those out of the way and we'll just give those a little bit of a, a dry we can just let that rest for a moment. Move that out of the way. And all the time, this is then doing its thing. And it means that even if I dry it a bit now with the heat tool, I'm not moving much because it's almost dried it, it by itself. What I'm going to do then is I want another stamp. I'm going to use my container stamp 401. This poor thing, the stamp is so well used, it's grubby on the back. So if you just give them a little clean, you can wash with soapy water if you want, the back, and then it'll just re-stick. Especially if you, you haven't got the baby wipe fluid on there. But yes, you can just wa wash them with a bit of soapy water if you've lost the stickiness of the back of the stamp. Just stamp our container. There we go. I'm trying to stay tidy. It's not really working. So I'm just going to cut this out because I don't like working with a big piece of card. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to handle. It's just there we go. So cut out a little pot out. And I can add dimension to that. I can I you can I blah, 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 blah. you can either use your ball tool and place this on a soft surface and just rub there, or you can just use your hands. It's entirely up to you. Although I've done that and I want to add a bit of stamping, which is typical. We'll do that after we've just added a bit of the grey colour. So I just want my HB pencil. So I just want my HB pencil and a paper stump. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the HB pencil. Just colouring it with that. Just to add some grey. Just to give a little bit of shading which you might find difficult to see, but I will hold it up once I've done that. Also remember, if you're going to touch your project, just give that a blot. And what I'm doing now is I'm just using my paper stump just to blend that HB pencil out. Just to blend out. I love doing this on flowers as well. And then I can just add a little bit more darkness. Just 
just to give a little bit more depth. And then again, just use my paper stump, just to blend that out, just to soften that out a little bit. Just so you can see, it just softens that out. Got an itchy nose now. So, I'm then going to use my Bulb Gazette stamp set 907. I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping to the pot and I'm going to use my morning mist, my grey ink, just to add a little bit of stamping just to the pot. There you go, just so you can see that. And to be fair, it's probably best adding dimension to your pot without touching it. So I don't know where my ball tool is, so I won't worry about it. And then I'll just use the back of my scissors and just work around. There we go, and it'll just give it a little bit of a dome. I'll just make sure my hands are clean, which is a joke, as if they're going to be clean. The backgrounds now look lovely. They really do look lovely. I will bring them in and show them you all. What I'm going to do now is give this a little bit of a, a dry, because we've got a little bit of moisture on there. I've let the ink do what it needs to do drying it now won't affect anything it's not going to move the ink it's just literally going to dry my card and I need to lift this up because the colours are just amazing just from the re-inkers and just with that white just wonderful Just turn that over just so that we can flatten that card out. It's surprising how much I think there's some moisture on the bottom of the non stick craft sheet as well, which doesn't help when you're drying. But you need to make sure that's fully dry now. And there's still moisture a little bit on the and the thing about these backgrounds is you won't get any two the same it'll always look different because it depends how you use that puffer and if like me you just can't stop using it Definitely. now i want a stamp set i probably haven't got out here which wouldn't be, wouldn't surprise me if I got it out. Oh, I have, I have, I have. Oh, I surprise myself sometimes. Right. Acrylic block. So I'm going to use my little miniatures stamp set. Just adore this stamp set. So I'm going to use my miniatures, which is stamp set 756. And I love it because everything's just a little bit smaller. So I've got the text. And this is a lovely text for creating backgrounds with. It really is. And I'm going to... It, it talks about nature, so it's perfect for our background. 
I'm going to use my morning mist. And then I'm going to sort of note vaguely where my flower is going to go. I'm just going to add some stamping just going down and I was going to add second generation but I like that too much so I'm going to continue with adding this just looks beautiful on that background let me just show you it works beautiful on that background and it's still open enough that you can still see the background because at the end of the day you've worked hard on the background you then don't want to hide it all so that it all disappears after your hard work let's add a little bit here and what i've done is i'm adding ink to the top half and then not necessarily the bottom, so it just fades away as well. So we'll add it on the bottom now, a little bit, and then nothing on the top, just so that fades away. And just add a little bit more, just so it sort of fades away into your background. It's just, it's a lovely background that is, just works beautifully. And then I can bring my flower in because I know where it's going and my little vase as well. Obviously, we're going to need to ground everything. And then I can just decide whether I want to use the actual circle behind the pot, which works quite nicely. And what I can see instantly before I even place anything on here is I can see that my grey ink that I've just added the background stamping with, I can see it's shining. Let me see if I can show you in the... There you go. You can see it's shining. That means the ink is wet. And obviously it will be wet because I've put that Liquitex ink on there. I've put those oxides on there. It's not porous. It's just lying on the top. So I'm just going to give that a blot. And you can see, can you see? Yes, you can see what ink is pulled off there. So what I tend to do is give it a couple of blots, especially when I've put as much on the card as I've put on. I will give it a couple of blots. So this is the side with the ink on. And then I'll give it a dry. Just drying that just to make sure that we get rid of that shiny surface where the ink is still dry, it's uh, still wet. You just need to give that a dry and tilt your card because when you tilt your card, you can actually see where the ink is wet. more there we go it's just worth it following those processes so if i use the other side of my card now paper even copy a paper tracy i've got no ink on there so that's perfect wonderful i'll go back to doing my design now so I'm going to add my flower here. So I'll add a little bit of the pin flare just to my flower head. And I'll just add a little bit more white with my cotton. So I'm pulling it out very loosely, not tight. I'm pulling it out so it's already loose, the cotton.
Now I'm just going to sort of tease it apart just so I've got that bit of white in there. I've got wires under me desk and I'm trying not to touch the wires. Let's add a good dollop of that pin flare glue. Nearly at the end of that one anyway. And then let's just add a little bit to the stem, just a little bit of adhesive to the stem. There we go. Let's just add that bit of cotton there. And just that bit of cotton just adds a little bit of texture. I'm not going to flatten the flower down too much. I'm then going to add my little vase here, like so. Obviously, we're going to add touches of white, but I don't want to do that yet. I'm giving the card time to dry obviously if you're not demoing sometimes you'll do things in different orders so before you stick down you can wait for this to dry and add your white touches before you stick it on the card because that would make more sense when you're demoing sometimes you do it in an order that works for you as a demonstrator sometimes you can do them in a different order when you're doing them at home we'll just add that there and then we're just going to tuck this behind. Like so. And this is where you end up faffing for England if you're Tracy. Of course you do. Press that down. And it comes to life when you add your white touches. Let's just push that up for the we'll go in the bin after right so this is what we've got so far so i want to add a little bit of shading which if tracy was a good girl she did add it there and i did actually sharpen it so and i've got some pencil extenders as well from some lovely friends on facebook so I can use this right until it gets to the end. You don't waste anything here. Move that down. Let's just grab some water. There's a little bit of green on there. We don't want that. There we go. I'm just going to add a little touch of water to my brush. And just add... A little bit of shading take off the excess just so you can blend it out to nothing there we go and then we're going to add some around the circle again you can wait until your project is dry before you try to add the shading But I love, I love doing the little fiddly bits. It just makes me happy. We'll leave that. Actually, we'll put some down the stem. Which is often trickier because Tracy's added cotton. But then when the recipient receives it, they do see these little details take the excess off just so that you can blend that out to nothing there we go don't flatten that flower right what I'm going to do now is grab my quill ends so we're going to use the quill ends stamp just so we can have our little beard Know where to put anything. I want a small piece of card because I haven't got room. Leave that out of the way and then we'll just have our beard. We just need to make sure we use that black ink because we want that beard to stand out. So 
just had to check then whether I'd inked the beard. Just there we go. And I am going to be thorough and just blot, especially with me cutting that image out. I just think it's worth it. So we'll just cut a little beard out. Just going to leave the tiniest, tiniest of borders. Just, to, just so he stands out a little bit. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of that limey colour. Just. And this flower inside is the same as the flower on here. So I'm just adding a little bit of that limey colour. And then I will end up faffing. So it's entirely up to you where you want to put your beard. I think mine is going to go here. Yes, it is. Now, before you add any of the white touches, it's, it is better if you can let all the inks dry. just don't want to press the beard down too much there we go. and I'm just going to grab my oh it's there my micron pen and just add a little bit of the stem just going into the Vase. just so that you can see what we've got so far you can see that you've got these sort of liney touches here and that was from the oxide reinker and then I want a word go back to my stamp set and on the stamp set it's got the word elegance so I'm going to use that same stamp set flower trio 924 let's use the same acrylic block and just wipe up a bit of moisture Try not to stretch your plants, 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 <laughs> your stamp as you place it on your acrylic block. And just add that there. Just give that time just to soak in. To the card again it doesn't really need very long just make sure my hands are clean yes they are cut our word out Just making it so that it's a little bit thinner. Let's move these out the way. Now I don't want to add this at the moment because I just want to grab. My mind's always working overtime. 
Now, I've got my A4 stencil, but let me see if I've got the other one. Where are you? I'm going to use the small one. And let me just see, where did I... Oh, that's a good thingy. I was going to say... I'll use my distress cranes and traces like, where did you put them? This is why you shouldn't have a move around. Let's try the other cupboard. Oh, there they are. I was going to say you shouldn't have a move around, but I moved them off my desk. I'm going to use the distress cranes. And I've got the twisted citron here. I'm just going to add a couple of little circles to my design. I'm just going to, and just to blend it, I'm just going to touch my finger on the baby wipe and just blend that. But because I've already got things on the surface, it should work quite nicely. because I've already got layers on that surface. Now we need a bit of a turquoise, well, peacock feathers. Mm, yeah, let's, let's have a look at peacock feathers. So we've got twisted citron and peacock feathers. I'm just going to touch it on that baby wipe just to blend it a little bit more. I'm just going to use the peacock feathers again because I'm just blend, I'm building, not blending, I'm building the color. It's like anything, isn't it? You know, things don't happen in seconds. Let's just... So I'm just creating a couple of circles just to move this up so you can see. Just adding a couple of circles just so that it adds to my background. got to be careful not to not to squash your flower because I decided to do this afterwards but this is how inspiration goes it, it you know you sometimes decide to add things afterwards just add a little bit of the blue which is the peacock feathers I have to keep Asking myself what it is. And it just adds a little bit to the design. Just And you can still see the text through there. So it works quite nicely. Then the sentiment is going to go here. So it will hide some of the circle. So I need another one down here. Let's just add, and as you can see, I'm doing it in a really professional way. I'm just scribbling it on there, just touching my finger on the baby wipe, just to so it's a little bit wet. Not it's moist, not soaking wet. And you can easily put it over back again if it isn't, you know, it isn't quite what you you're wanting. Just wiping my finger just so I can add the elegance here. Let me just have a look. Oh yes, then I've got those pops of green which bring the green that's happened in the background just a little bit more to the foreground. Let me just clean that just so that it doesn't end up in too much of a mess. All right, let's place that back now. Let's place these back. And this is why I also like doing the longer videos because I can just take my time. The other backgrounds as well are just lovely, really lovely. I love it because some of my cotton's even got the green on. But you can see how much green you've got on your finger. 
So what I'm going to do now is just add, so you've got that grey text in the background. I'm just going to add a little touch of black text in the foreground. Just, just going to touch. There we go. It's hardly anything, but I'm just touching. I'm not sort of adding too much. But it just adds a little bit more life. I don't need anything. It's it's funny, isn't it? I just know little touches. So can you see the little touches? But watch this. Can you see how it's shining? Because it needs blotting and drying. So just give that a blot. Because obviously it's going on to a non-porous surface. So just give that a blot. And let's give that a dry. Just to make sure. worthwhile just doing that and this is where we we put our finishing touches on so I'm going to add my little black Posca pen just around the edges of the sentiment these are Posca paint pens that I use for splatters and drawing around the edges and other things as well. Not that that is very clean. Right. Plus, you should just always hang fire before you do anything with this, just so that that black that you've added to the edges is just dry you just give it a couple of seconds so just add this here and I can see those pops of green underneath which works beautifully and we're just going to give that sentiment a little bit of time because it's got that cotton thread underneath as well And I always try to stick things where there's cotton thread because that's me all over. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit more shading just around that here. And I, I love, <coughs> excuse me, the finishing touches. It just, they, what, they, they make me happy doing the finishing touches. Needs a little bit more. Uh, let's just add a little bit more there I'm then going to just add a little bit under the circle don't need much water just to just to blend a little bit for shading and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some touches of white so I don't know <coughs> How dry this is but I'm going to add some touches of white just to the flower so some little dots to the inside and then I'm just going to add some touches of white just 
just sort of brings it to life a little bit more. But, you know, you could do all this and then adhere it at the end. Just so that, unlike me, you're not fighting, trying to do something that isn't dry yet. So you could just take your time. And sometimes what I do is, again, once this layer is dried, I go back in with another layer of white. Just going to add some white there. A little bit to that flower there. Bit to the bead. Those circles. I just think the little touches for me are worth it, I think. So let's just add. Do I want the actually we'll do it so the Posca pen goes on the black as well. So this was four and a half by six and a half inches, and I'm then going to add this to a black mat that is a quarter of an inch bigger. And just I will show you those other backgrounds as well now they've rested a bit more. So just add that to a quarter of an inch bigger. So just remember the actual blank that I was working on was four and a half inches by six and a half. And then I went up in quarter of an inch increments. So I've gone up quarter of an inch there. And then I've gone up quarter of an inch again for a white mat. Add the white mat like so and I know I'm gonna to have to measure the card blank because my mind will go blank so just add the white mat then I'm adding another black mat which I'm sure that black mat is the last one before we add it to the card to add it to a white card that has got a half an inch bigger than these so let me just get the card measurements because my mind goes completely blank so the card blank is six inches by eight inches so six inches by eight inches and depending how you fold your A3 card and how you cut it depends which way it folds. So I'm just going to, so six by eight is my card blank. So it's slightly bigger, going up by half an inch. Let's make sure that is straight because that's going to play with my head. better okay let's just give that a couple of seconds just to grab hold and then I'm going to add splatters so that it's over my card let me just move these out the way grab my pasta pen and bring my card in Try and avoid your sentiment if you can. You can just put a bit of card over that if you wish. I want some over the edges. There we go. Just wipe those up. Right, and what we'll do is we'll just take a look at that card now just so that you can see that you can see the shading you can see the green in the background from the re-inker and you can still see the white because that makes it brighter just so you can see that 
with the white touches on the flower just make that pop a little bit more let me just show you the backgrounds now they've rested so this is the background that was with the sprays the distress oxide sprays and the white liquitex and i'll bring the other one in this is the grey without any white on it and I think what you'll find is when you add the white Liquitex you get more of the green touches which I love and then this is the reinkers again with the purple the blue and the grey colour but with the Liquitex on top absolutely love them So I hope I've inspired you to have a go. I've really enjoyed that. I've enjoyed my time just spending an hour creating something I love. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you are a new viewer, I hope you love it enough to subscribe to the channel. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.